بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين I am very happy and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing of being with you again and reflecting on hadith 29. As you know, this hadith has uh, many subjects. The next subject is about recitation of the Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, urged Amir al-Mumin alayhi salam about Tilawat al-Qur'an. So because of this now we have some chapters on recitation of the Qur'an and Qur'an in general. Uh, he says, Imam Khomeini says that uh, there are uh, many uh, merits in reciting the Quran, in memorization of the Quran, carrying the Quran, acting upon the Quran, teaching the Quran, learning the Quran, contemplation on the Quran. And there are so many hadiths about these uh, topics that we cannot discuss here, all of them, but we mention only few. One is a hadith in Al Kafi. Uh, Shaykh Kulayni Rahmatullah Alay through his chain of narrators uh, narrates from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and Abi Abdullah alayhi salam Qala al-Quran ahadullahi ila khalqih The Holy Quran is a covenant uh, a kind of treaty uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, available to his people. فَقَدْ يَنْبَغِي لِلْمَرْءِ الْمُسْلِمْ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ فِي أَحْدِهِ It is expected from every Muslim to look carefully at this covenant. وَأَنْ يَقْرَأَ مِنْهُ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ خَمْسِينَ آيَةٍ And to read from this Every day, 50 ayah, 50 verses of the Quran. Uh, so as a uh, kind of daily uh, recommendation, we are recommended to re read 50 verses of the Quran every day. Then there is another hadith that we had uh, in the series on uh, Quranic sciences and it is mentioned in the book uh, uh, which inshallah if I remember I will talk about our book on the Quran also at the end. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam says Ayatul uh, Quran Khaza'in Verses of the Quran are like treasures you know, if you go to uh, a person who has a very ancient collections of some pieces of arts, some manuscripts, or for example, uh, some people uh, have, you know, collection of the coins, or s some treasures that are you know, discovered through excavations and for example, you know, there are boxes of uh, jewels and this type of thing, pearls, etc. So when this treasure is opened, you should look into it. Unfortunately, we just look at these boxes as if there are many boxes, so we underestimate what is inside. 
because there are many boxes of treasure or jewelries, etc. Every ayah of the Quran is treasure or treasures. فَكُلَّمَا فُتِحَتْ خَزِينَةٌ يَنْبَغِي لَكَ أَنْ تَنْظُرَ فِيهَا Any of these treasures, when it is opened, it, we should look into it carefully. Uh, you know, we had this example, I said, you know, suppose you go to a museum and there are paintings on the wall. A person who doesn't know art and you know is uh, not familiar with all the details and all the subtleties of these paintings says uh, you know I, we went to a room or to a hall there were you know many paintings and it took us you know five minutes you know but an artist a lover of art and painting if has time uh, spends a few days on every art every piece of art and if is going to next one is sure that uh, still there is something that has not discovered and it's very difficult for him go to the next one sometimes a person goes to a big museum takes him two hours three hours and people go there for days and years because they want to understand something more. So a woman with understanding and ma'rifah when goes to the Quran considers the Quran as an exhibition of treasures of knowledge and wisdom and very carefully treats each of these uh, items in this museum or exhibition and then uh, Imam Khomeini says uh, what we understand from these two hadith one was Al-Quran Ahdullah ila khalqih and every Muslim should look into this covenant carefully and the one which says that it's treasures and we should look into these treasures we understand that reflections and contemplation and pondering on the Quran is what we need we need tadabbur you can call it contemplation you can call it reflection pondering this tadabbur which means to examine the ayah as much as possible as much as you can from different angles from different directions look into ayah what this ayah means in connection with the previous for example verses the next verses and the entire Quran the cross references what implications this has so we need to do this kind of tadabbur and meditation on the Quran of course we should avoid tafsir birrai to interpret the Quran according to our opinion Quran is a book of knowledge you need to discover it you cannot impose your opinion on the Quran you know for example if I give you a document in another language you cannot say in my opinion this means this in my opinion that means that you have to learn that the language uh, your opinion doesn't uh, solve any issue here what opinion you know we could have without knowing that language yes if a person who is learned who is trained who has seen other people's interpretations has been uh, studying this subject for many years if he says in my opinion then that is significant that has value but actually such people are the people who are very hesitant to say uh, you know this is what the Quran says the late Imam Khomeini when he was uh, offering some sessions on tafsir of Surah Hamd 
He used to say, maybe, it means this, maybe. A person who is a marja, a person who is who used to teach uh, philosophy, you know, in the advanced levels, Irfan, he has tafsir dua sahar when he was in his 20s. Uh, now he's interpreting the first surah of Quran and he says, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so uh, we have to be very careful. So he says, we have to avoid tafsir birrai. And sometimes people ask me, then what should we do? So I say, the great benefit that we can take from the Quran is to use Quran as a reminder. In huwa illa dhikrun lil alamin. Because unfortunately, there are many things that we forget, or there are many things that with a little attention we understand. Although maybe it was a new point, but when it is said, it's enough to understand because we have all the requirements for understanding that point. For this type of things, you don't need to be expert to, to use the Quran as a reminder, as a something to refresh your memory about moral points of view, your relation with Allah. But if you want to come up with a new understanding then that's where we need to refer to the experts so you should not uh, stop reflecting the Quran and try to understand the Quran no you should do that reflect on the ayat if you come across something which is clear and uh, something which is a reminder okay take it if it is a new point and you don't know is it what the Quran means or not? Check the books of Tafsir and see any Mufassir has said this or not. This is very important. And in particular also, Imam Khomeini mentions here the uh, problem with the people who were in the process of interpreting the Quran without reference to Ahlul Bayt and you know that uh, we have hadith which says إِنَّمَا يَعْرِفُ الْقُرْآنَ مَنْ خُوْطِبَ بِهِ The one who understands the Qur'an is the one who was addressed. So the Prophet in the first place is the teacher of the Qur'an and then Ahlul Bayt. So again here there is a question that so is Qur'an by itself clear or we have to refer to the hadith? The answer is that yes, the Quran by itself is clear, but you need someone to teach you to reach this point that you can do tafsir al Quran bil Quran. Yes, someone like Allah Tabatawai can do tafsir al Quran bil Quran, but he is a student of this school of understanding the Quran all the principles and all the guidelines that we have received from the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt are there and then he can try to understand the Quran with Quran but still he checks if there is anything about that particular ayah in the hadith that may shed light or may for example conflict and then we have to revise our understanding so we cannot uh, bypass Ahlul Bayt or Na'uzubillah ignore Ahlul Bayt and we cannot also say we don't understand anything unless it is mentioned in the Hadith our relation with Ahlul Bayt is relation of uh, trainees and students who are being educated by them but their aim is to make these people also somehow independent in what sense? Not independent in the sense that they become equals. In the sense that they try to train them, to give them all the tools and all the skills so that then they can work within the same parameters but independently if they have no access, especially for the time of Qiba. But even in the time of their presence, they used to do this. To train people and then these people were in different places functioning. They didn't have a spokesman. 
they trained scholars that could share their scholarship but were trained by them. This is the beauty of the school of Ahlul Bayt salam, that we are not just uh, you know, following uh, blindly and we are not also uh, ignoring and becoming uh, too much independent and not you know, uh, holding any principles from a hierarchy. We have to find out uh, something balanced in between. Imam Baqir alayhi salam uh, quotes uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if someone recites Quran 10 ayah in the night, every night 10 ayah, lam yuktab min al ghafilin would not be considered as a heedless person. If someone recites 50 ayah, would be considered as zakir. So sometimes we are ghafil. Sometimes we are not ghafil, but still we cannot say we are zakir. <laughs> so by reading 10 ayah, you are not ghafil. By reading 50 ayah, you are zakir. Someone who remembers. And if someone recites 100 ayah, kutuba min al qanitin al qanitin wal qanitat, those who are humble, obedient. And if someone recites 200 ayah, becomes khashi'ah. And if someone recites 300 ayah, is fa'iz. These are the winners. And if someone recites 500 ayah, becomes mujtahid, means people who really work hard. And then if someone recites 1000 ayah, then would be given uh, qintar, uh, you know, something, uh, a great uh, measure of, which is explained in the, in the way that is like uh, too much uh, of, uh, you cannot, you know, basically uh, understand and imagine how much of value it has. So it is mentioned in this way. Uh, of course, uh, this is again something that we have to find balance and we have to check it against our other duties and responsibilities. Uh, and also maybe throughout the year your situation is different in the month of Ramadan, outside month of Ramadan. But if you don't have priorities if you don't have conflicting duties the Quran has this much of value that even if you recite one sixth of it every day it's worth it basically day and night you can spend with the Quran but of course because we have other duties and responsibilities with difficulty we should switch to other things but the desire should be in us for spending as much as we can our time with the Quran and there is hadith from Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam which says لا خير في عبادة لا فقه فيها ولا في قراءة لا تدبر فيها if there is worship without understanding, without deep understanding, there is no benefit. Nothing good in a worship without understanding. And nothing good in qira'ah, recitation, without tadabbur. It doesn't mean that it is useless 100%. No, there are benefits. But that benefit that you want to get from qira'ah needs tadabbur. That uh, benefit that you get from ibadah needs fiqh, needs understanding, deep understanding of ibadah. What does this salat mean? What I am saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example. And then he refers to some hadith about how the Quran on the day of judgment uh, appears as a very beautiful person and would intercede for the people who uh, spent time in dunya with the Quran and acted upon the Quran. And we had these, uh, some of these hadith 
in those series on the Quran, whether understanding the Quran or Quranic sciences. And, and one of the beautiful points here that you are all familiar with, and again, Alhamdulillah, we had it there was that man qara al Quran wa huwa shabun mu'min ikhtalat al Quran bilahmihi wa dami. If a young believing man or woman recites the Quran, Quran will be mixed with their flesh and blood. Because when you are young, you have lots of uh, opportunities of adapting yourself to something. A person who is young, his or her mind is not already uh, shaped and already filled with conflicting ideas, for example, or at least things that has occupied the mind, you know, like a room that has no uh, space for new things to bring. No, mind is uh, still very fresh and able to grasp heart is still fresh and closer to fitra so if from young age we start it's never late so those who are old or middle aged they should not think it's uh, totally you know uh, gone and the opportunity has gone it's late but we should understand that the sooner you start, better results you get. You know, it's like, for example, learning a language. This is the second example I'm saying today about languages. So, if I learn a language from childhood, I can uh, speak like natives. But for example, if when I am 20, 30, 40, 50, I learn and even I spend lots of time, it's very difficult to speak like a native. I still, I have, you know, some accent and, you know, some mistakes. I, it's very difficult. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. So, when we are young, of course, for me, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about those of you who are young. When uh, still you are young, you should uh, spend more time with the Quran, act upon the Quran, and inshallah, Quran has this ability to penetrate into your uh, flesh and blood and be mixed with that. And then Imam Khomeini uh, very much uses this concept in this part several times that this is more than Quran becoming like a malaka. You remember in akhlaq we said qualities can become malaka. For example, someone is generous few times, but sometimes has been generous for some time to the extent that this has become a permanent quality. Permanent in the sense that it's not easily uh, stopping, although it's possible that with working hard you can change your malakat. But it's somehow fixed, established. Sifatun ra sikhatun lin nafs tasluru anha al afal bisuhulatin min gaira taravi. This is the definition of malaka. It means uh, established quality in the soul. Because of that, you can act easily without thinking too much. A generous person doesn't take him or her that long to understand where he or she should be generous. They can quickly understand and do it. People who are not generous, it takes them long time to come to the conclusion that they have to do this generous act. And even if they understand, it's difficult for them to do it. So there is no suhula, there is no ease, and there is need for tarabi. They have to think a lot about it. Okay. Imam Khomeini says this is a stage even more than Malaka because Malaka means you have a, you have a stab, an established quality in the soul. But what we are talking about this is 
Quran becoming part of your reality, not just a, a virtue or just a quality. The, your entire soul can be shaped and formed with the Quran. And then on the Day of Judgment, uh, depending on how much we have taken Quran on board, we would be asked to read and write read and write iqra was'at or iqra warqa warqa or was'at means rise so if i have absorbed because my understanding has been that uh, it's not a matter of how many ayah you memorize in dunya how many uh, issues from the quran you have absorbed one percent two percent three percent you have acted upon one ayah you have acted upon two ayahs based on how much of quran we have taken on board we can rise in heaven and adadu daraj al jannah adadu ayil quran the number of the degrees in heaven is equal to the number of the verses of the quran and there is also a bashara for the people who find it difficult there are people because of their age because of for example they don't speak arabic they have not uh, had chance to learn or for any reason they have missed it now they want to go back to the quran but it's difficult for them it takes them more time imam sadiq alayhi salam says inna alladhi yu'alij al quran li yahfazahu bi mashaqqatin min wa qillat hifdhin lahu ajran the one who tries to treat the Quran and you know deal with the Quran in order to memorize it but it's difficult and his or her memory is not that strong would have two rewards so because the more energy you spend the more efforts you put into something you, the more reward you get of course those who have already prepared themselves they can do maybe more reflections more works but you also for example if they uh, spend one hour and memorize one uh, page you will spend two hours and uh, memorize one page in two hours so you will get inshallah double reward but they also inshallah can do maybe two pages so they inshallah so no one is here uh, losing if they do what they can but if they become uh, for example a little bit lazy or relax and don't do anything else so you'll get the same benefit just by uh, spending more time and then he says that ahlul bayt alayhi salam were people who had realized the Quran in themselves you know one of the uh, wives of the Prophet when she was asked about the Prophet she said Kana al -Quran. his character was Quran his traits of character embodied the Quran uh, Ahlul Bayt -Salam, Prophet and Imams were embodiments of the teachings of the Quran they were not just reading the Quran or memorizing the Quran, they were acting upon the Quran. And then uh, he has a discussion about young people that I already talked about this. And we have to be uh, using this stage of life in the best way we can do because that's the very productive time. Then there is a discussion about etiquette of recitation and he says it's not just uh, something about reciting beautifully and actually he has here a point that uh, for people who uh, spend lots of time on uh, you know recitation uh, methods and uh, skills I'm not against that and we need in society to have people who really know those things and they can teach they can inspire other people you know 
But what is important and the point of Imam Khomeini is not that he's against that, but he says sometimes people only spend time on this or attention to this. And also sometimes the way they recite actually changes these words. So they are no longer correct. They may recite them beautifully. Maybe even sometimes they consider some of their own rules, but uh, we should not change the whole language of the Quran, the whole Arabic ways of expressing things. And But then he makes another point, which is more general, is that uh, we should not be busy only with the surface and with the words of the Quran how to read how to recite how just you know to uh, utter these words uh, about you know maharaj al huruf and these type of things we have to be careful that this should not take much of our attention and we should have time to then reflect on the meanings and then implementation and you know practicing and absorbing he quotes uh, f this hadith from Imam Sadiq from Al Kafi. Inna hadha al Quran fi hem manar al Huda wa masabi hudduja. In this Quran, there is manar al Huda, manar minaret, you know, where light used to go all over the plain. It could be a d desert, it could be a masjid, for example, in a city. Light, and you know, they used it also for. Uh, azan calling for prayer so quran is a source of light light of guidance and the light in darkness doja and people should turn around their eyes when they deal with the quran in the sense that they should reflect and then imam said Inna tafakkura hayatu qalb al -basir. thinking is the life of the heart of a person who has been given vision insightful person and then he refers to what Amir al muminin said in khutbah muttaqin that uh, again alhamdulillah we have this in the book uh, about that in the night talina la ajza al quran yurattaluna tartila fa idha marru bi ayatan fiha takhfifun how when they come across verses that give some uh, warning they take those verses very seriously as if they are hearing the a scream of people who are in hell. But when they come across the verses that give uh, promises and hope and talk about heaven, it's as if they see the heaven with their own eyes. So they reflect seriously. And then there is a discussion about sincerity in recitation that we have to make sure that it's with sincerity. And he quotes some hadith. For example, there is this famous hadith. Imam Baghd says that al Quran thalatha. There are three types of reciters of the Quran. Some of them take the Quran as a good for business. They take money from this way, you know, from the kings, or for example, uh, respect from people, or try to say people, you know, to people that you know I have you know such honor and position. So. Basically, it's a way of getting popularity, respect, money, etc. Uh, another group, Rajulun Qara Al Quran. Some people who recite the Quran, they are very careful about you know uh, letters of the Quran, about uh, you know this type of thing. But they are not careful about the uh, spirit of the Quran and the laws of the Quran, the values of the Quran, and this is also a problem. And the third category of reciters of the Quran are those who Quran Those who put the medicine <coughs> of the Quran on their heart and the illness of the heart. Imagine you know you need a cream to put on your burnt skin. These people use the Quran to heal and cure the problems in their heart. They uh, stand up uh, the night, reading Quran, reflecting Quran. Uh, in, during the day, they read the Quran, they 
make thirsty themselves with the Quran in the sense that it means that they spend good time on reading the Quran and Imam says Al-Bala when these people are around because of them bala and calamities will be kept away from community from <coughs> people and because of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives a kind of victory and strength against enemies because of them rain comes from heaven these are real Qurra uh, of Quran that Imam says they are very rare very rare and then we have some other hadith here about the recitation of the Quran because I want to finish today this part about recitation I go to the last point which is about tartil of the Quran uh, tartil means that you choose a proper pace not too fast not too uh, slow Abdullah ibn Sulaiman says Sa'altu Abu Abdullah alayhi salam an qawlillah ta'ala waratil qur'ana tartila I ask Imam Sadiq asam what does this ayah mean waratil qur'ana tartila Imam Sadiq said qala amirul mu'minin alayhi salam tubayyinuhu tibyanan or tubayyinuhu tabyinan there are two versions you explain it a kind of you know good explanation uh, which can mean to express it to ex uh, uh, pose it la tahuddahu hadha shir wa la tanthurhu nathra raml don't make too fast as if you are reading a poem or uh, so slow as if you uh, are uh, spreading some sands so not too uh, slow not too fast what is important is that the hearts which are hard with the help of the quran should feel a kind of uh, sadness and a kind of fear that makes them open makes them soft Amir al says, you should not say, I want to finish this surah, quickly to finish the surah. Don't sacrifice reflections and attention to the meaning because of completion of surah. You want to read more ayah, for example, more surah. Quantity is important, but quality should not be sacrificed for the sake of quantity. And he says that in the hadith says that in al Quran Imam Sadiq Ali Salam says in al Quran an nazala bil husn fakrauhu bil husn. Quran was revealed with husn, a kind of sadness, but a kind of seriousness. Uh, this sadness is not sadness that is painful. It's not a, you know a sadness which is because we have a problem maybe we can say a kind of seriousness and this was revealed in this way so he recited also in this way فَقْرَأُوهُ بِالْحُزْنَ and Imam, Sad uh, sorry, Imam Sajjad السلام, used to recite the Quran so nice not nice in the sense of just uh, technique no means the attraction of the uh, spirituality of Imam uh, reflecting the beauty of the Quran was so much that people who used to pass by they used to uh, uh, stop and sometimes they went unconscious sometimes someone was passing by 
and was screaming and you know or for example becoming unconscious that attraction he had in his recitation of course this was because he was feeling something special and that was coming out very naturally may Allah inshallah enable us to taste or at least witness this in some other people okay alhamdulillah we uh, managed to uh, complete the discussion inshallah we continue with the rest of the hadith next week alhamdulillah rabbil alameen